everyone. My name is Martin Kala. I'm a solutions engineer here at Crusoe, and I'm joined with Devin at Windsurf. Uh, Devin, thank you so much for your time for yeah. coming in today and having a conversation. Pleasure to be here. Definitely. Yeah, I think just starting off, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What brought you to Windsurf, your role there, uh, how long you've been with the company, and just kind of help us understand you know, what it is you do day to day? Sure. So I guess I should provide some context on Windsurf. So we're a company that builds AI tools for developers. So the main thing you may know us from is our IDE, which is a program that developers use to write code. It's called Windsurf. And what's special about Windsurf is that it's an agentic IDE. So you're actually pair programming with the AI agents inside the IDE. And what drew me to Windsurf as a company, I actually joined uh, two summers ago with, before it was before we were working on AI tools at all. And we were an AI infrastructure company. It was about eight people at the time. And we were building compilers. Uh, virtualization software for self-driving car companies. And what really drew me to the company was, first it was a small team and they were working on really hard problems and trying to be intellectually curious and really just, I was looking to use the things I learned in college about math and science and machine learning and do something really interesting with my career. And the moment I got there as an intern, it was really just striking how much I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis uh, and how dedicated this team was to building a great company. And just the day-to-day -day was so exciting for me. And so we had pivoted to coding tools very early on in my internship. And I guess the rest is history. It's been uh, a year and a half later, or two and a half years later. And... We're, we're now uh, serving hundreds of thousands of people each day. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a, it's definitely an impressive journey that, yeah. that you and, and the entire Windsurf team have been on. I know uh, Windsurf was actually the first customer that I met my first day at Crusoe back in late September 2023, back when it was you know less than 50 people. Yeah. So I've been able, I, I myself have been fortunate enough to, to see the growth. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think maybe the first question to dive into is, you know, uh, as uh, Windsurf was exploring uh, compute offerings. Uh, what challenge were you faced with with your existing providers, and definitely what uh, what were you trying to accomplish with with your uh, infrastructure providers? Yeah, I think the main thing at the time we're talking summer 2023 is that we were a pretty small company, um, a couple dozen people at the time, and we were just trying to find someone to take us seriously enough to give us compute. We weren't ready to commit to these hundreds of millions of dollars of contracts with a tier one provider. And what we really wanted was just a somewhat small reservation, kind of reflecting the approach we were taking to training malls at the time is that we were focusing on what we're good at. We're not going to go pre-train GPT-4 ourselves. We're going to focus on these pretty small models that run at low latency in the background as you're working, like autocomplete models. So this really elicited where Crusoe was the only provider who is flexible enough to take a bet on this that early. And uh, we've grown with Crusoe over the time. Crusoe has grown with us. And so that, that was really the main thing back then. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, definitely appreciate, you know, the entire team willing to take that risk on us. Uh, and I'm curious, can you speak to you know what you your team tried before engaging Crusoe? Uh, with it, was there any learnings or any any other alternatives that you explored? Yeah, I I'm not sure I can speak too much to the specifics here, but um, just trying to get GPUs and and sometimes TPUs from Google and struggling uh, to actually get access to them and being forced to do these minimum commits um, over a, a longer time reservation. And so Crusoe just made the most sense out of all of the available options because we're able to be very flexible with the terms uh, and just get kind of exactly what we wanted as a small company uh, growing into the space uh, from a cloud provider. Awesome. Yeah. I'm curious about your deployment on Crusoe and the solution itself that you've implemented. Can you speak a little bit to how you've architected uh, the use case that you have on Crusoe, whether it's training or inference and, and how that has evolved over time as well? Yeah, certainly. So when we were first starting out, we were mainly using Crusoe for training. Uh, 
And over time, we've kind of grown into more inference as well on Crusoe. I think the the most interesting thing about the evolution is, I'd say, storage. Uh, it's maybe not like a very, like, the most interesting thing in the industry nowadays. But as we've grown as a company, we've realized that storage is actually pretty important as we scale these training workloads, as we scale inference. Mm -hmm. So growing from just using the disks on the nodes themselves, the GPU nodes, to uh, using storage nodes and then shared, the shared disk uh, has been re really exciting for us. As for what we're using the nodes for, so I think as we've grown as a company, we've trained larger and larger models. And then we have different use cases for the models as well that run in very uh, low latency and some in higher latency. But uh, using our the, the, the power of the most recent generation of hardware on Crusoe, uh, we found has been um, very uh, useful for us for inference. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I know uh, one thing I see just working with customers is uh, kind of like when WinSurf started, compute was initially the main bottleneck, not being able to get enough access. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing is more and more often, it's actually storage is becoming the bottleneck. Yeah, yeah. You can't get enough data into the GPUs fast enough yeah. right, to, to make something useful to train the models. Uh, so I'm glad you touched on that piece. Um, so yeah, thinking a little bit more, more high level, um, you know, what, what have been the results of uh, being able to leverage Crusoe as an infrastructure provider? Sure. Uh, what are you most proud of and, and what, what are you looking forward to? Yeah. So, uh, of course, we, we get all like stable training, uh, reliable training. Uh, we're able to do research on our own models and train some real models for really special experiences in the product. I think um, we're, we're certainly really proud of the agent that we have in the product, but we've done a lot of work for this uh, passive tab experience, which predicts the next edit as you move throughout your code base and actually now leverages uh, information from your terminal and other kinds of contexts like your history of edits. So we've been able to provide these differentiated, almost magical experiences for our customers uh, because we're able to train models on Crusoe, basically. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. And I think, you know, just because you guys have had the flexibility, the terms have been uh, been able to be managed with relative ease on your team. Uh, you've expanded with us quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, just wondering what, what has kept Crypto competitive compared to all these other Neo Cloud offerings out there on the market? Yeah. I think it's, I think the flexibility has really continued. Uh, like now that we're growing as a company, we, and with how fast the space is moving, it's hard for us to predict very far in advance what our compute needs will be. So Crusoe has been there uh, for us in being really flexible with us and the amount of compute uh, really uh, available on demand compute, which has been really exciting for us. Uh, so if we have something we want to spin up over a weekend, we can just do that now. Uh, and I think just building within the ecosystem has also been really nice for us that we already have an established relationship with Crusoe. Uh, we have existing, all of our infrastructure already set up on Crusoe. So, and it's just so easy to spin up more nodes when we need them. Uh, they just slot right into what we already have. So we don't have to deal with multiple clouds. Um, so just like operationally, it's been really nice for us. Yeah, that's great to hear. Yeah, I know our dev team puts a ton of work uh, enabling all our services, UI, CLI, API, I know you guys leveraged Terraform today. It's a major yeah, infrastructure. Yeah. So we've talked about the, your architecture, the infrastructure experience, uh, how you've been able to grow with Crusoe. But I'm curious, how has your experience been interacting with members of our support team, uh, how we've been able to engage you? Uh, can you speak to what it is like being a Crusoe customer? Yeah, so the, the GPUs will have problems at any hour of the day. I think that's just a given for whatever cloud provider you on. But what really matters is how proactive you are about recovering from those failures and how available your team is at any hour of the night to uh, respond to it. And so we've seen remarkable growth from Crusoe in all of these areas uh, since we began uh, our relationship with them a year and a half ago. And we've gone from us having to report failures in the nodes to common ones being automatically detected by uh, Crusoe's infrastructure. 
and the support team has expanded from just a few people like you uh, to a team all around the world who can help us at any hour of the day. So just the proactiveness uh, has been really remarkable, especially as we've expanded our footprint on Crusoe and now there's more service area where things can go wrong. So now we're in a, a constant cadence. Okay, this is something wrong with the storage. P Crusoe is proactively helping us fix it. Uh, it's really got a long way to like even just keeping us sane as as time goes on. We're still a pretty small team and don't have the the, the power on our side to spend a lot of time fixing these things. So just having Crusoe support investigating these issues for us has been really helpful. Yeah, appreciate that. And and I know from from my perspective, it's it's a pleasure being in Slack channels with your team, being able to just collaborate asynchronously, making sure we're we're available all hours of the day. And and yeah, most importantly, building out the tooling to be able to give you those automated alerts should we detect anything wrong with your infrastructure. And I mean, I think maybe just to wrap up, there's only a couple more questions mm -hmm. I want to go over. But um, as you continue to think about you know your growth uh, with infrastructure on Crusoe and other cloud providers. Um, you know well, how, what are your next steps as you continue to leverage it? Like what what becomes more important? Mm -hmm. um, is it scale? Is it moving to inference? Is it continuing to train large models? Or, or how are you thinking about this next step of of your AI development? Yeah, I think it's really all of the above for us. We're exploring all these axes, more complex training methods, larger models, more inference and also just growing our team. So just the demand for compute at our company will only be increasing. And really it becomes a question of then, okay, if we're expanding our footprint on Crusoe and these nodes have some baseline failure rate that we need to account for, things will go wrong more often. So then it's a really just a, a question of how do we recover from it? And how can we build our infrastructure to more be more resilient to these kinds of things as well mm -hmm. uh yeah definitely yeah i know i think there's some metrics out there that about three percent of a cluster should be reserved for for hot spare capacity and yeah. and that's something that we definitely uh work hard to enable for for your team yep we can just uh tell crusoe that a node is broken and then we can as it's easy as turn, turning it on and off in the the panel then we get a yeah. working one yeah yeah it's pretty pretty magical that way I know depending on what other providers, you, you know, customers may be using, if it's a bare metal cloud, uh, often fixes need to be applied in place, but because of how we virtualize it, we're able to to migrate VMs to, to new hosts pretty pretty quickly. So I think just tying all of this together then, uh, what advice do you have for peers at other AI companies, enterprises who are getting started in their AI journey, facing similar challenges on compute capacity, choices and providers, and what lessons have you learned as part of this partnership with Crusoe that, that you would want to give to the community? Yeah, I think in general, it's good to focus on where your company has leverage and where you can make a difference in the industry. Specifically, like our DNA is as an infrastructure company, we cut our teeth building these compilers for self-driving car companies. So it's very natural for us to say, okay, we're going to put this coding product in the market that relies on infrastructure as a core reason for why it works. Now, that may not be for everyone, but then again, as you early on, it may be tempting to take the easiest solution, use a provider for your models, but then doing the really special things at scale, providing these special magical experiences for your customers at scale with your custom fine-tuned models, that's something you really need customizability for. So if you want to be really special in the space and really operate at scale, you need to choose the flexibility early on uh, to build your own infrastructure on a platform like Crusoe, which gives you the flexibility to do these kinds of things. Yeah, that's awesome. Well. I really appreciate you taking the time to to come visit us at the office here and, and share your experience on Crusoe. It's been a pleasure working with you and, and partnering with, with Surf mm -hmm. and really excited for, for everything that's in store for your team. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you.